My name is Wyatt Chang. I work as a senior designer on Diablo 3. And I'm Rob Foote. I'm a lead game producer on Diablo 3. Yeah, definitely. I think when the team brainstormed what potentially uh, the Necromancer could, could be in Diablo 3, there were some skills that we just said, we've got to have it. Like, we've got to have corpse explosion. So if you play uh, today, you can play the, the Necromancer uh, if you'd like to check it out. But corpse, you know, corpse explosion was a favorite that people wanted to have. Uh, there's also Bone Spear, which you know, players loved. But also it's important to realize like, uh, Diablo 3 is a very different game uh, than Diablo 2. So there were a number of skills that we wanted to create that were brand new from, you know, from whole cloth. So you have Blood Siphon, where the character is able to siphon blood directly from monsters, as well as Blood Rush. Um, a mobility skill is really important in Diablo 3. So giving that necromancer the ability to basically, you know, their skin, uh, you know, is removed. They teleport as blood across the screen, and then they reconstitute themselves in a new location. So I think it's, it's both new and old. We haven't established what level every skill will be handed out yet. Um, today on the show floor, we've got six skills that you can play. We announced two more skills yesterday. We've got Blood Golem and Army of the Dead coming up. So that's eight skills. But in Diablo 3, every class actually has over 20 skills. So there's still over a dozen skills you haven't seen yet. And on top of that, uh, so we have to figure out what makes the most sense for unlocking those skills. And then we also are going to have five runes for every skill. And those unlock at a different level as well. So there's, there's um, lots to see still. A lot of Diablo is about customizing your character the way that you want. So I think the Necromancer, it, it's, it's, it's a little early to say for sure. But I think uh, if you want to play the Necromancer as a field commander of the dead, commanding skeletons to attack, you can play that way. If you want to cast skills with Bone Spear and Corpse Explosion and not necessarily focus on your pets as much, but instead focus on casting lots of blood and bone skills, you can do that. And hopefully there'll be ways for you to play a support role as well. He has curses, and so maybe those curses can be cast and help out your party as well. So it remains to be seen, but I think every class in Diablo you can play in a lot of different ways. I think um, right now everything's still very much in development. As a team, we're going to play it, uh, and there could be changes from what you see on the floor to what we finally ship with. Um, I think also it's important we put um, we put the, we will put the character in the public test realm so that we can get feedback from players. They help us to find bugs to ensure that the level of quality is very high uh, when we release the Necromancer. But ultimately. Another thing that could change is runes. Runes are a great way where we can, you know, change how many skeletons potentially or what type of skeletons potentially. I think runes give us a lot of flexibility um, to make people have many, many options uh, for necromancer builds. Uh, you know, I don't think we actually specifically call out his age. I would say it's important to realize it's not the same necromancer uh, from Diablo 2, uh, nor is it the necromancer Zul uh, from Heroes. It, basically, the, the Necromancer from Diablo 2 and Zul, they're Priests of Rathma, and so these Necromancers are also uh, in that same order from the Priests of Rathma. And there will be, as you can see, a female version of the Necromancer that will be playable, um, as well as the male. They get health. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, they get uh, the resource. Essence. Yeah. Essence. Um, well, I'd say the entire Necromancer, we, we, we work in feature teams, so the group of people that are making the Necromancer, uh, they are hard at work all day, every day at, at work, uh, working on the Necromancer. We also have other features that are in development uh, simultaneously, uh, sort of in parallel. So the team that's working on the anniversary event patch was separate from the Necromancer. It's important that people are focused on the, on the single feature for the most part uh, that they're working on. Um, while there are some people that do cross cross work, the teams uh, generally work on on one on one subject area. Sort of a, a, there's an aristocratic uh, appearance. There's also a, a blood appearance. There's sort of like a classic look appearance. In terms of the functionality, I don't think we've established that yet. Um, it's something that we'd like to do sort of in collaboration with the community. We're going to go to PTR. I mean, we're going to have some ideas for sets we're going to want to design. But we also want to hear from the community to see what kind of play styles they would like to see. When the Necro Rise of the Necromancer patch first comes out, we're only going to have one or two sets. And then we'll implement the third and the fourth after we've seen what people would like you know, to take it next. 
Well, it was good. We saw it coming. We knew it was coming. Uh, so I think the team brainstormed uh, last year, or sorry, this year, it's still 2016, about what we could do. Um, and I think it was very interesting, uh, the process, because initially it was, we're going to add the music to the game. And then as more people got involved, the idea grew and grew in a good way. Uh, and that's why we ended up with this idea of let's take all of Diablo 1 uh, and try to reimagine it in Diablo 3. All 16 levels, you'll be able to fight through four different bosses, so Skeleton King, uh, The Butcher, uh, Diablo, and Lazarus. And also, you know, it's, it's got that filter over the, over the screen for the graphics, so it's a, you know, we call it retrovision, but it'll look pixelated, it'll sound reminiscent, so if people played Diablo 1, they will love it. And if they didn't play Diablo 1, they'll still love it. Hmm. I think the reason we put Diablo 1 in was as part of the anniversary, we were celebrating the anniversary of Diablo 1's release. It was released uh, December, 31, uh, December 31st, 1996, so we wanted to do, pay tribute to Diablo 1 um, and celebrate. So the month of January, the entire month of January, uh, is going to be the anniversary month. So when we were launched the patch early January, and then at the end of January... The Diablo 1 uh, Labyrinth is going to go away, and then it'll come back every year in, in the month of January. For Diablo 2 players, because we also feel uh, it's a 20th celebration of Diablo, that, that's one of the main reasons we chose the Necromancer, is to sort of celebrate uh, Diablo 2. If you talk to players who play a lot of Diablo 2, they love the Necromancer class, and that's why we chose it. Uh, yeah, Frank's been with us for a long time. I, I've I've known Frank for a long time, and he's a he's passionate about all of Blizzard's titles, and uh, he's very he was very excited to be able to be he was very honored to be able to announce the Necromancer. Uh, it was big for him, and that's why we 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 wanted to announce it at the very end of the opening ceremonies because we knew that uh, Frank knew that the the Necromancer announcement would be. Uh, very popular, and it was. We heard the crowd. The crowd cheered. Was very happy when the announcement was made. Kamsamida, kamsamida.